you think about the transition of, of our landscapes, uh, our, our open fields from what traditionally would have been these native warm season bunch grasses, uh, even cool season natives, we, we went from bunch grasses where you'd have clumps on the landscape interspersed with bare ground and forbs, wildflowers, weeds, whatever you want to call them. And we've transitioned that over to these carpet farming grasses. When you look in East Texas, uh, you can think of uh, Bermuda grass, uh, Bahia grass are, are two big ones. Um, you go further north, you get into uh, these cool season exotic grasses like fescue that are, are just basically become really thick. These poults hatch out of an egg. They're two inches tall. They can't fly for two weeks and they have to follow their mother across the landscape. So if a poult wants to get access to insects, it has to be able to move across the landscape. It has to have its feet on bare ground. Some of my family would point out a, a hay meadow, then they're like, look how beautiful the green grass. Uh, that's something that we see as being a, another barrier, but at a smaller scale. Adult birds, no problem. They can use that day and night, no issue. But the only way you get adult birds is for them to go from that two inch baby to get to two weeks of age where they can fly and eventually be recruited into the population. And that's the hurdle, is getting that little two inch baby to find enough insects on the landscape where it can grow up be big enough to actually use those landscapes. So whenever I drive across the landscape in, in East Texas or anywhere in Texas, I see lots of exotic grasses, carpet farming grasses, not as much uh, native warm season grasses or forbs. Where you see our most robust populations, like in South Texas and the Rolling Plains and the Edwards Plateau, just envision these wildflowers, these scenic areas. That's brood habitat. Um, but you go into my country here in the post oak savanna, um, we're cutting Bermuda grass. If we're not cutting Bermuda grass, hey, it's as thick as it can be. Fertilized, beautiful monoculture, no weeds in it. That's what everybody, a lot of people, I'll say, want that to look like. Turkey poult cannot move through a fertilized monoculture Bermuda grass field. It is unusable habitat. It's basically a wall for them. On the other end of the spectrum, we're cutting hay in the middle of the nesting season. So turkeys begin to nest on average. The majority of your hens are sitting on a nest incubating eggs on April 21st, and they're going to be on there for the next four weeks. In the next four weeks, almost everybody gets their first cutting of hay. And close to 12% of our nests are lost every year to mowing alone. So mowing and cutting hay. If we imagine that we think 30% nest success is a great year and we just took 12% off the top ourselves. So that's an issue. Once it's cut, it's about an inch tall <laughs> and a pulse two inches tall and everything running across there is going to see that pulse. So again, you went from too thick to now it's too short and it's not providing brood habitat. But hay grass, the same thing. If we graze it significantly, it's going to be short. It's going to fall over on itself. It's going to be mat forming versus uh, that interspersion of bare ground. Tiny little pole needs to get his feet on the ground. Can't fly for two weeks. So, um, yeah, this the exotic grasses are a significant issue. We think about what traditionally would have been in the landscape. Even in overgrazed pasture, we would have had lots of croton, lots of sunflowers or goat wheat, I guess I should say. I was raised in Leon County. Broom sedge. You know, there's some grass snobs out there, a lot of them are my friends, who uh, don't think a lot of broom sedge, but it's a native warm season bunch grass that creates screening cover. It provides nesting cover for quail and turkey and screening cover for poles and usually has weeds mixed in there with it. And I'm using weeds broadly. It could be wildflowers, it could be croton, whatever, partridge pea. These are all great things, but they're not things that you see doing well for the most part in areas dominated by bahia grass, Bermuda grass. And it's not a small problem. If you look at the amount of acreage that has been converted from native warm season grasses and wildflowers, forbs, whatever you want to call it, to Bermuda grass, bahia grass, it is mind blowing. Just the millions and millions and millions of acres that have been transitioned into that. And every bit of that has reduced carrying capacity for wild turkeys and reduced useful space for wild turkeys. Um, it is a constant problem and it's so hard to fix.